this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with the different selection tools inside Photoshop. Now people, I'm going to start with the very basic tools, but I'm going to show you all some very important practical examples that will help you all understand all the different important and you know complex selection tools of Photoshop like uh, polygonal lasso, magnetic lasso and these different tools. So I'm going to start with the very basic which is uh, the rectangular marquee and uh, basically people um, this can be used for creating different effects but let me show you what exactly does it do. So say that you have uh, something um, square like rectangular sh um, in nature and you want to select that in your image you can just use the rectangular marquee. This comes uh, in handy when you want to do sky replacement, especially on photographs which have like, you know, um, which have roads. Um, I'm pretty sure when beginners start, because that's what I did, uh, you, you'll go for creating photo manipulations which have something to do with the roads, right? And if you have like a highway, you can just select that, mask that out and, you know, that's very easily done, right? Instead of using the pen tool or the or the polygonal lasso or, or anything like that. So um, that's pretty easy. Um, same goes with the elliptical marquee. See that my employer said that they don't like this, that they don't like the circle in the image. They want to replace it with, say, a photograph and they want me to select this, right? So it's very easy. I, uh, this can be done with the elliptical marquee. Just draw a selection like this and now I can mask this much part out. Uh, one thing that I'd like to talk about, uh, about these two tools is if you want to maintain the proportions. Now, what I mean by that is if you want to draw a perfect square or a perfect circle, if you want to draw a perfect square, just take the rectangular marquee. And while you are creating the selection, just hold on the shift key and you'll be keeping the proportions fixed, therefore getting a perfect circle. Same goes with the elliptical marquee. If you want to draw a perfect, um, what is it, circle, then just hold on the shift key and there you go, a perfect circle, right? That saves you a little time. Um, these easy and basic things can also be combined to create some very interesting effects, say, um, say a, a vignette effect. So all you need to do is you need to create a new layer that I already have done. Make a selection like this. Now, for in order to uh, in, in order to create a vignette on this image, I need to inverse the selection. And this brings me to a very important topic of inversing things. People, uh, sometimes it's better to select something which you don't want to be selected and you can then just inverse the thing. For example, um, right now I wanted to, uh, to, I wanted to deselect anything that is in the middle over here, right? Because a vignette is going to be in the borders, but selecting the borders is going to be a little tough for me. So what I did was I selected uh, the center portion of the image and now I can tell Photoshop to basically inverse the selection or select anything that has not been selected. So I can go to select and take this option inverse or of course you can use the keyboard shortcut control shift I and I highly recommend learning the shortcut. So control shift I and now you can see that all these borders are also having the marching ants. Um, this shows that whatever uh, between these two marching ants, between these two boundaries is selected and all this part all the, all the center of the image is no longer selected. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to hit alt backspace or what you can do is the way I've shown you all is go to edit, fill and take black, right? 100% opacity. Make sure that your layer is selected. Click OK and boom, you have this uh, vignette. Now in order to get this a uh, very uh, soft vignette, what you can do is you can go to filter, make sure that your new layer is selected go to blur and go to Gaussian blur and just increase the radius to a very high number, say 500. Okay. And click okay. And that's what you end up with. Now, all these, uh, exercise files, people are going to be in the description for you to download and to work along with me. So, um, you know, go ahead, download them. And I'm really expecting you all to work along with me because, um, you know, I, I'll be showing you some very practical examples and it, it, it would be much better if you could, you know, follow along with me. Next people, we have the, uh, the lasso tool set. Now, uh, the lasso tool is very easy to learn. Actually, there's nothing to learn in it. Uh, you can just draw a freehand selection like this. See that? Very easy. This is, uh, well, this comes in handy sometimes, but I'm not sure if I use it a lot. Uh, so I won't really teach anything about it. I've already talked about the selection modes. You can play around with the pixels or the feather pixels, but we'll talk uh, a little bit in detail about this in the future when we get to refine edge. Um, next, we have the polygonal lasso. Now, this is one of my favorites because it, it really gets uh, helps me to get a precise selection. And people, if you're working, if you are aiming to become a graphic designer, trust me, selections are very, very important. You cannot ignore selections at all, you know, especially in borders and, and in edges. Right now, you may see uh, ignoring the selections because this is a tutorial. I don't want to waste my time 
you know, explaining y'all things and bore y'all. So therefore, I'm just gonna speed this up. The way polygonal lasso works with people that it creates different nodes. See that? It creates different nodes and then it joins the nodes with a line. So it's it's kind of like using a uh, a pencil with a scale. You know, you create two nodes, right? And then you join it with the uh, with the scale or with the ruler. Um, but the good thing is that the joining uh, automatically takes place inside Photoshop. Now, whenever you are uh, whenever you're using the pen, uh, the polygonal lasso, you'll always be stuck in a place where you want to get rid of this point that you have started. Because sometimes it happens that you know that you don't want to select something or you want to reset your selection. Uh, and you know you, you you're gonna try, you're gonna try, but this thing just won't happen, right? So what you can do is you can hit the escape key and the whole thing will go away. Or you can do one more thing. You can hold on the control key and you can see that your mouse pointer changes a little. You get that zero or that circle thing uh, on your mouse pointer. That basically means that if you click anywhere else now, that is going to complete the selection. So if I was to click here, it's just going to make a triangle. See that? Very easy. Okay. So let's take a look at some practical examples now. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn this butter into an ice cream. So I'll start making my selection like this. And once again, I'm going to be ignoring all the rules of creating a selection because this is a tutorial, right? We don't want to waste our time. And trust me, selection and the edges, borders are very, very important. Sometimes you'll be facing a lot of problems with hair, um, you know, furry animals like, uh, say, puppies, uh, cats, you know, and, and those kind of creatures because masking becomes super tough with them. But don't worry, people, in, the, in my advanced tutorial, like 20, 30 part, I'm going to be showing you all the different techniques that I know for getting that kind of work done. So let's just complete all the basics for now. Right? Basics are very important. A lot of people just forget about them and you know, and they end up asking me all weird questions and all easy questions actually. Okay, so I've selected this butter. What I can do is I can come over here to my adjustment layers, click over here, hue and saturation, and then I can colorize it and I can change the color to something like this increase the saturation and boom you know butter just becomes a uh, black current super now uh, the next in line we have magnetic lasso the way magnetic lasso works is it takes a look uh, it takes a look at the color value in your image so for example you can see right now i've got a very uh, you know proper differentiation going on between the blue and the white so if i wanted to select this bottle cap i can just kind of you know click somewhere and then draw along with it. You can see it. I, I can just draw along the border and uh, Photoshop or the magnetic lasso is going to create different modes for me. Say if you wanted to have a little manual control and you wanted to create your own nodes, you can do that. Just click anywhere and you know, you, you'll be drawing your own nodes. So that's very nice. It, it really depends uh, what kind of image you're facing and you know, and uh, therefore using different selection tools. Like for example, I, uh, if you wanted to, um, like if your image had uh, ha had a proper color distinguishing going on, then you can use the you know, magnetic lasso for selecting something. If not, and you wanted something very precise, then you can go with the polygonal lasso. So it really depends what kind of image you are dealing with and therefore, you know, changing uh, the different selection tools and, you know, using different selection tools. Once again, my employer comes and says that T style, this uh, bottle color is not good, changes to red. I select it, go to hue and saturation, um, colorize, change this to red, saturation to red, and boom, we have changed it uh, entirely. So that's very nice. And that's how you use the magnetic lasso. Now, one problem that you'll face uh, with, with the magnetic lasso is that sometimes it goes a little crazy. You can see this? And this is when it, it cannot uh, distinguish between the colors of the image. Now, I think my Photoshop just froze. Okay, but basically what you have to do is if you want to get rid of all this uh, fuzzy stuff with all these different nodes, just hit the escape key and everything will go away. All right. Um, now you have a lot of different options over here like the width and the frequency, uh, contrast. Frequency basically means uh, how many nodes you want it to create, uh, you know, when you are making your selection. But I'll, I'll, it's better if I talk about all this in my later tutorials. This, this all is advanced stuff. Uh, you know, a beginner really doesn't need to know about all this. The, the default settings will be just fine for you. Next, we have exit image. Okay, yeah, uh, I want to talk about the, uh, I mean, 
yeah, these two tools with this image. Now, I'm going to start with a quick selection. Quick selection comes in handy a lot of times. Uh, basically, friends, the way quick selection works is it takes a look at the different shades of a color. So, for example, in this image, I have the color blue. Say, um, say I want to select the sky. I want to do a sky replacement, right? Now, there is a different blue over here and a different blue over here. But in all, it is going to stay a blue, right? So, if I start making a selection by just clicking on the image and start drawing, you can see how easily it's going to select everything for me. And without any problems I have selected the sky. Now there are some problems over here but this is due to the edges but remembering how much time we invested in getting the selection of the sky I think this is a pretty decent job and this works when you have a proper color distinguish uh, differentiation in the image so you can see we have a blue sky and white clouds therefore it did a good job of selecting that. If I inverse it and if I mask it out you can see we did a pretty good job of removing the sky. Now I'm going to talk about the mask. Uh, I'm going to talk about masking in my later videos, people. Don't worry, I'll get to it. Um, but if you want to go ahead and experiment with masking or watch some other tutorials, I actually recommend watching other other tutorials on YouTube. If you are, uh, you know, if, if you're self-learning and becoming a graphic designer, um, but I was, I will be talking about uh, masking in my training course. Don't worry. So that's how you select uh, with the quick selection. Basically, if you want to uh, quickly select all the different, like, like if you want to select. Uh, one color in the image very quickly that's the tool you use next we have magic wand well the way magic wand works is it takes a look at the color uh, of the image and then selects all of the color of that image in one shot so for example say my employer comes and says that TSL this image the like this in like in this image we have this black computer like this black screen I don't like it I want to replace it with a good inspiring photograph so if I click over here you can see that it selects almost all the blacks in the image, right? And you don't want that. So what I can do is I'll press Control D. Also, people, yeah, this is very important. Let me, let me talk about this. Um, say if you created a selection, right? And now you don't want it anymore. How do you get rid of this? Very easy. Press Control D, and that selection has been disappeared. Um, you can also uh, do it the long way. Just go to Select, go to Deselect over here and the, key, the, the keyboard shortcut is right here Control d and that's gonna go away so we basically have this image we, we want to do a screen replacement on this um my employer says he doesn't like the screen i click on it and it selects almost all the dark parts in the image we don't want this right press Control d click on contiguous and now if you see if i click on the screen it selects a like a small portion of the black now the reason it's not selecting the whole screen is because I've kept my tolerance down to a very small number. I'll increase it up to a 50, click somewhere, I'll click anywhere, press Ctrl D, and now if I click on the black screen again, you can see I've got a perfect selection. Now I can't have used, I could have used the polygonal lasso for, you know, marking the selections, but you know, just understanding where uh, different tools will work saves you a lot of time. And uh, trust me, you, would, you will want to work as fast as possible you don't, you don't want to charge your employers for this employers for this because when you are working slow it gives a wrong impression about you right and when you have a wrong impression in the market you will lose business especially if you want to become a freelance graphic designer so uh, just just, un just understanding where you have to use the different tools will really save you a lot of time and will uh, you know come uh, in handy a lot of times trust me on this so anyways you wanted to do a, a screen replacement i've i've made my selection I'm going to take this image, I'm going to hit the V key for, uh, for uh, getting to my selection tool. I'm going to hold on my Alt key. I'm going to take this, switch it to my this image. I'll press Ctrl T. Oops. Uh, I'll press Ctrl T for selecting the entire image. I will squeeze it down like that. Like that. Right? And I'll make a selection again. What's wrong? Okay. Make a selection again. I'll mask that much. Sorry. Control Shift I. I will mask that much part out. And perfect. You see that? Very easy. Very nice. Perfect, right? Very easy. Very nice. Change the screen in absolutely no time. So that's how you work with the different selection tools, people. Thank you so much.